Harry, Harry, this is Lord Potato, and this is what if Asta got in the powers of, well, the, uh, what's it called, Jade Emperor. What well, got in the powers, was given the powers, and eh, whatever. Just, just you, uh, just so you know, it's basically if, what's it called, the Jade Emperor gave the powers, well, his powers, mostly the like physical and his, like, uh, uh what's it called, like the eye and all that, towards Asta. Now, you're all gonna guess, how the fuck did that work? Well, let me explain this, but yeah. So, we go into a world. Well, before we go into the world, we go into the gods. The gods are right now having the discussion between, well, the Monkey King. The Monkey King does not want to have any fucking trouble with the different, well, what to call gods. Really, he doesn't really give a shit that much with the gods that much. And the gods will kind of... Well, leave him alone if they decide to fuck off. Of course, the gods kind of think about it. But of course, they're not as powerful as the Monkey King right now. I mean, they are. It's just, well, the Monkey King has done like a lot of dumb stuff. Because, yes, he, he has like four, five, six, seven, eight layers of fucking immortality. So they realize they can't really kill him. So, of course, they just tell him to, okay, we just leave off. Of course, the Monkey King disappear. This is where, well, the other gods decide to go to the different realms of where they just like to go. One god in particular, well, one being a species of god, in particular with red hair, longish red hair, kind of said that he would like to just travel different worlds. Of course, the other gods didn't really bother and ask him why he wants to do that, but whatever. Of course, this god of species decides to travel the world. He decides to leave his three children to be fucking fine. Mostly his three children that he had. He really didn't have any other children of his own. Except for those uh, kind of like demigods. But he really didn't have that many children. He decides he doesn't really take care of them much. But yeah, of course, after such a long time of him traveling different worlds, he decides to land in one world where there's magic in this world. Of course, he sees a giant demon statue, and of course, where well, he already has like like what's it called grayish hair, kind of becoming bald, and of course, where well, he has a cane. He just been traveling over worlds, not caring that much. Any world that doesn't like bother him much, he just well not destroy it. We just leave it alone. Any world that actually bothers him, he would just destroy it in an instant. But yeah. But he landed in this world, and of course he is just walking around this forest and seeing a kid train, really hard. But of course he's right now trying to fight against a boar. Of course this kid seems to be eight years old, and of course when the kid is getting close toward the boar, to actually try to punch the boar. The boar actually launches at, well, this kid. Of course, this is where the boar hits almost the kid, but this is where the boar actually stops. Then to grab a smashing in upon him. This is where, well, also was confused. This is where, well, also was on the ground. She mentioned he did get hit by the boar, and the boar did try to launch at him and try to hit him again. This is also, as you mentioned. This is where, well, also was confused. Hey, huh? What just happened? This is where, well, the old man says, Are you okay, kid? While his third eye is kind of glowing. This is where I also say, uh, uh, he's getting scared. This is where the old man kind of stops kind of using his ability. And this is where the boar kind of runs away because he's scared as hell. He has this like feeling like natural feeling that he needs to fucking run away. The boar. Well, he does. So, of course, I also say, uh, who are you? This is where, well, the old man says, ah, well, the name's Jade Emperor. What's your name, kid? This is where, well, Asta says, Oh, my name is Asta. Of course, kind of saying me nervously. This is where, well, the Jade Emperor says, Hmm, interesting. Your name's Asta. So what are you doing here, kid? This is where Asta kind of becomes sad and says, Well, I'm trying to train so I can become stronger. I don't have any magic, and that's why I'm just training. This is where, well, the Jade Emperor says, Magic, I see. So this is one of those worlds with there's abilities of magic. Hmm. Interesting. I did get to visit one world where those people using chakra. 
I guess I did help one of those kids in using what they call my abilities. Hmm. This is interesting. So you're saying you have no magic? He said to Asa. Asa says, uh, yeah, I, I don't. Um, I'm sad because I, I'm the only one that doesn't have any magic. And people call me weakling, pathetic, and other things. Even my mother come. My family disown me. When I probably disown me, probably since ever since I was born. Then I met those in the church. But still, everyone hates me. I have my kind of brother named Yuno, but he has so much magic. He was blessed with magic, even though he's an orphan like me. Everyone loves him, while no one loves me. This is where Asta kind of goes down and kind of like puts both of his knee, uh, both of his like knees up, and this is where he kind of puts his arms around it and kind of uh, sits sad and all that. This is where the J number says, "Ah, I see. Well." Magic is important in this world, isn't it? This is where what? Uh, I was gonna say, yeah, I guess. And for you being an old, I guess you're also powerful in magic. Jane Emperor says, <laughs> Me? Magic? Of course not. I have no magic. Wait, this is where I was gonna say, huh? But that did you just use with that third eye? This is where, well, huh? the Jane Emperor says, That isn't magic, kid. That's an ability I was always born with. I said, well, well, I was to say, can I also have abilities to us? Maybe? I said, well, well, the Jane Emperor says, well, I don't know if you were born with it or not. Because I'm from a different world. I was to say, huh? Different world? What are you talking about? <laughs> I will explain it to you. If you all like to hear it. You probably just want to go back home and... Well, live life. This is where, well, the old man starts walking away, and that's where Asa kind of gets up. And this is where he, he's frozen to kind of follow uh, the Jade Emperor. He's actually frozen if he should follow him or not. And she, she, he should go back to the church. This is where Asa says, screw it, and decide to follow the old man. This is where, well, we go into a time skip. A time skip of, well, the grimoire kind of, well, grimoire tower. This is where Yuno has finally got his four-leaf grimoire. And everyone in church was celebrating happy for the fact that, well, mostly was a come. Uh, well, not the church. Mostly they were still at the church and all that. Mostly Yuno was alone and all that. And people were shocked to see, well, Yuno get a four-leaf grimoire. Now, of course, this is where, well, someone else got a four-leaf grimoire. Of course, it was icy color. And this is where, well, this girl is like... Interesting. I got a four leaf. This is where it seems that her sister, sister, somewhat kind of jump on her and say, "Whoa, you got a uh, four leaf? This? This is where? Well, uh, this girl says, "What did you get, Junko?" Junko said, "Oh, I got a five leaf. I guess." This is where so many people are just wiping their eyes, seeing commoners get well. What's it call like four leaf, five leaf, or whatever. This is where someone in the corner is right now smiling. An evil grins and interesting. So these peasants, commoners, are able to get these type of grimoires. Interesting. He smiles an evil grin, cackling. <laughs> this is where well, we go into well them walking out. This is where you know somebody will like get towards the what's it called church uh, through that well narrow well mostly hallway or whatever not hallway. Mostly back to the church and all that. This is where, well, he just has to walk down the stairs and then get to the church and all that. But before he gets to the church, of course, this is where these two girls are kind of talking to each other. Mostly ta- uh, saying sis to each other, but yeah. Of course, this is where another girl is kind of just quietly towards somewhere else. And of course, just walking slowly. But of course, it's saddened that, well, she did get a four leaf. Well, Grimoire of, well, not a four leaf, it kind of just had a clock on it. This is where she was confused, but of course it had three leaves on it. This is where, well, she is kind of just quiet and doesn't actually want to bother the other people that are next to her. But this is where before they all left to kind of separate ways, they don't know each other, of course. But of course, this is where the nobles do come out of nowhere and does target Yuna because he's a guy and they don't really want to 
target the girls right now, but they would do it because they're nobles pricks and nothing. Started talking mad shit to us, you know, and saying, give us a 40 crumble. But of course, it worked well. Renji appears right now, tying all, well, six of them with chains. Wait, yeah. No, not six of them. Five of them. No. Two, two. Yeah, six of them. With chains. This is where Renji says, ah, thank you for your grimoires. And you with the three leaf girl with kind of, well, what's it called? Black hair and one eye patch. Even though you don't have a four leaf, your grimoire is so interesting for having the clock on it. What an interesting thing to have. This is where you know, say, give me back my grimoire, you bastard. This is where, where Renji say, no, no can do. And also, thank you for your 4 leaf and 5 leaf. I'll be taking it. I'll be using it to sell it to the black market. I'm gonna become rich. <laughs> this is where, well, Renji is laughing and says, Well, so long, suckers. This is where he's walking away. And this is where the noble says, You know where nobles? This is where, well, Renji says, And do I look like I care? No, I don't. Bye. This is where before he walks away, he kind of like, Starts trying to walk through the stairs, and of course, someone like walks up the stairs without a care in the world. And of course, Renji says, Huh? Who are you? This is where the person ignores Renji and starts walking towards, well, past, well, Renji and past the other people that are tied up to the chains. This is where this person has longish gray hair, of course, has five orange hairline, like hairlines and all that, like on top of his hair and all that. And of course, it where, well, he looks like this. He looks like this. Of course, he has like a tailish uh, and blackish and has omega symbols on uh, like sh uh, coat and all that. A black kind of shirt with a kind of like orange uh, tie. Of course, it worked well. He's wearing kind of like reddish pants, like bermuda or whatever the hell it's called. And of course, blackish boots. Of course, the person seems to care less. But of course, has a sword right next to him. This is where, well, the person is walking past everyone. And of course, Renji is quite annoyed because, well, this person seemed unfazed against Renji. But Renji realized one thing. When he uses his chains, he can barely feel a, a single drop of magic from this person. This is where Renji says, huh, so you're just walking away. But it could be interesting that you might get a grimoire. But I should probably take you out first. Or, hmm. Whatever. I do have what's it called these grimoires. Any of those noble pricked one. So I might just Hmm. This is where I also say pathetic. You wouldn't even attack me because I know you're weak as hell. This is where Renji gets angry and says, Why you? Since multiple uh, chains after well this person. This is where the chains are getting close to uh well this person. This person turns around Slaps the air once, and this one air pressure appears. Boom! Smashing all the chains backwards, going straight towards Renji. Renji had it to dispel all of them. That's where everyone else that was kind of chained up got dispelled the chains away. This is where everyone almost got pushed away. Luckily, they managed to hold on to the chains or hold on to the ground. This is where, what? They all want in their eyes. How powerful is this person when he just slaps the air once? Does he have like some powerful wind style or something? They barely been able to sense his magic. Of course, it worked well. This person says, so un so weak. I can't believe I have to deal with some weakling like you. This is what, what? Renji says, why you? I'll show you who's a weakling. <clears throat> this person says, uninterested in Well, okay. Show me then. This is what Renji rushes at this person right now, just sending chains all around this person saying chain style chain piercing heaven this is where he tries to pierce at well this person now this is where well everyone else were kind of wanting their eyes and this is where well this person they you are really pathetic and annoying just like any normal criminal this is where well this is where the chains are all around us i'm about to pierce him and this is where asa says repulsion or whatever, but, but there's uh, attraction and repulsement, or it's basically almighty push or almighty pull. So basically, he say almighty push or whatever if you like to think about it like that. He basically blows the chains away, and this is why. Well, he then uh, br uh, pulls by kind of pulling, uh, using basically the pull one 
to pull uh, what's it called using a trash or whatever and pull was it called Renji closer Renji wind his eyes he was actually right now being pulled by this person out of thin air this is where well this person says hyper speed triple hits this is where well well mostly triple strike this is where well Renji was right now taken out with a couple of like punches it might have looked like one punch was sent towards him but 45 punches were actually hitting him in the face right now launching him towards with the calm the ground near the stairs that's where well you land down on the ground that's where well this person seems to be unfazed with Runchy trying to attack him so of course he just turns around that's where Runchy says I won't lose he sends one chain as well the, this last bit of chain Towards this person. This person grabbed the chain and just destroyed it by just squishing it enough by just destroying it. This is where Asta had enough. Yes, this is Asta, I should mention. This is where, well, this person says, You're so annoying. This is where, well, he hyperspeed again, appearing right in front of Ranji. Right now, you see him telekinesis with his third eye being activated. Yes, his third eye is activated, but no one could see it because Asta had his back. Towards everyone. This is where, well, Renji's pulled up to the in, well, up in the air. This is where, well, Asta rips this man's limbs into nothing but pieces. He rips off his arm, destroying his arm in a matter of seconds, ripping out his other arm, destroying it also, ripping out his legs and legs and destroying them also, ripping off, well, multiple organs out of this guy, and of course, starts ripping him into nothing by using telekinesis, by just pulling them apart. This is where, well, after Renji is no longer, Asta turns around, of course having his third eye closed, and right now just walking past everyone, not caring that much. Yes, this is Asta, if you wouldn't guess much. Of course, the word, well, he goes to the grim, uh, Grimoire Tower, but before going, he sees the four-leaf Grimoire, mostly the what's it called, green one. He grabs it and says, the fuck is this? I guess this is what a Grimoire looks like, or supposed to look like. Yeah, whatever. This is where he tosses straight to the wall and of course it indent it in there. This is where Yuno know, gets angry and says, Hey, you bastard! This is where he didn't know what to do, but he got angry. When he looked towards, well, this person, he said, You're, you bastard, you basically indented my book into it. And it's not destroy. I'm surprised. Those books are so durable. Hmm. This is where, well, this person... Keeps walking towards the grimoire that he just intended into the wall. And this is where, well, you know, kind of sense, wind style, wind blast. This is where, well, also turns around and says, Great, you keep sending another pathetic wind style. I'm gonna punch the shit of you, you know. This is where, you know, freezes, and of course, his wind style just also stops. This is where everyone else is kind of confused, but almost all of them are right now on the ground because they're trembling. From the fact this person is strong as hell and didn't even use a grimoire. This is where, well, you know, says, How do you know my name? This is where Asa says, You're so pathetic, so idiotic, so stupid. I guess that whole praising on Bell, you being a fucking god, so pathetic of people to do. This is where you know, says, Answer my question. Whatever. You really are so stupid and dense as hell. You know, do you remember the name Asta? That's where you know freezes and say, uh, Asta? Wow, that actually didn't take too long for you to remember. That actually didn't take you too long to actually realize. Well, the name. That's where you know say, where the hell where the hell have you been, Asta? It's been over seven years. Has it really been seven years? I thought it was eight years. No, we're fifteen. Well, we should be 15. Hmm. Or are we 16? You know, I'm gonna change our year to being 16 instead. So it's actually been eight years instead. Asta says, Oh, has it really been that long? That's interesting. Don't give a shit. Do I look like? This is where you know says, You left us. You left me at the church. Well, anyone knowing where the hell you have you been. Asta says, Mm, he counts in his fingers and says, Hmm, it's really been that long. Man, not long enough. If I can hear you scream and annoy the fuck out of me, it really hasn't been that long. Fuck off, you know. 
I don't give a shit that much. Go get your grandma and leave me the fuck alone. Asta said in such a cold ass tone. That's where Asta's going to his, well, going to the tower. And he kind of just like kicks the door in. And of course, this is where the door doesn't break, luckily, even though that was a powerful ass kick. He goes into the Grimoire Tower. And of course, wait. This is where, well, he waits there for at least five minutes since they knew it didn't have a Grimoire at all. This is where, well, before him walking out, this is where Yuna appears saying, I am not done asking you questions, ye Asta. This is where you know seems to be tired. Yes, he's been trying to get his grimoire for the last five minutes out of that wall because Asta basically intended that shit in there. So yeah, Asta says, no, we are done. Also, also, I can see that you're physically weak as hell. Now, if you don't want me to punch the shit out of you, I suggest you fuck off, uh, fuck off my way. This is where, well, you know, says, hell no. Nah. You are going to answer me a question or I'm going to... Repulsion. This is where a blast of, well, gravity exploded from Asa and Rana pushing, well, what's it called? You know, away. This is where, well, Asa did that, of course, using kind of his third eye, but mostly not his third eye. Just kind of transforming one of his eyes into red color, into basically the Omega symbol. This is where, well, Asa didn't just change his back his eyes, but this is where, well, something happened. The Grimoire, well, mostly Grimoire Tower started glowing. And of course, the doors behind Asta just closes. This is where, well, the old man isn't there. He's mostly just chilling. But of course, he heard the doors, like, slam and other things. He just thinks it's some, some reckless kids or whatever. He doesn't really check on anything. But this is where the Grimoire Tower started changing. Well, mostly, a Grimoire is starting to appear. Appear? Not from the Grimoire Tower itself. But it looked like the sky. The sky is being ripped apart. A blast of golden light from the tower is kind of shining towards the sky. Right now the sky is sending down a book. Down through the uh, tower. Flowing down to the tower. This is where the golden light kind of develops in the other grimoires. But of course still floats down. This grimoire kind of goes all the way down in front of Asta. Asta looks at this grim, uh, grimoire and says, interesting, very interesting. Instead of having the clover leaf, it instead has a golden omega symbol on it. This is where, oh, the grimoire seems to be a tealish greenish color and also a maroon, whatever, this reddish color of grimoire is on top of it. Of course, having some black, but some mostly black symbols on it. This is where Asta seems to see the book is pretty well, medium average size, but of course it's thick with a lot of paper, uh, a lot of pages inside it. This is where when he opens it, Jane's Emperor, that's what it says. This is where, well, Asta seems to just grab the grimoire and starts walking away. After reading the first page saying Jade Emperor, he knows what it is and of course decides to walk away. This is where, well, when he's actually walking away, he sees, well, you know, running towards him in high speed. But, of course, right now, trying to because, well, he's using one of his oh, well, wind cells to kind of, like, carry him most of the time. But, of course, where you know says, Asta! This is where, well, Asta seems to be unfazed with him. So, of course, Asta disappears. Mostly, uh, what's called hyperspeed behind uh, you know. This is where Asta says, one strike. This is where, well, Asta punch him in the stomach so hard. And this is where when Asta's walking away, you know, cough up some blood right now, just shocked to even feel that strength of power. Yeah, Asta didn't care that much. Asta's now walking away. And this is where, well, he sees, well, what's it called? Another grimoire that's kind of like um, being kind of grabbed by those nobles. Because the nobles thought that Renji is gone and even that one guy is gone. So of course they decided to grab one of the grimoires that mostly has a kind of clock on it. And three leaves. And it's kind of bullying the girl with well, mostly one eye patch on. This is where she says, can you please give it back? This is where they say, aww. And what if we don't? What are you going to do about it? This is where, well, the two girls already walk away. Mostly the two sisters or whatever. Of course, they're walking away, and of course, they're kind of getting annoyed, but of course, before they were going to turn around to kind of help the girl, the two nobles were already dented in the crown. 
right now Grady is smashing upon them. Right now this person with grayish hair and the uh what's it called orange uh, five orange like hairlines are kind of just walking towards him. Of course, right now a reddish eye is kind of glowing. And of course the words are smashed into the ground pretty damn deep into the ground. This where well the book is right now floating thanks to the telekinesis that well Asa is kind of using. This is where he grabs the grammar and then just gives it towards the girl and says, Here, don't lose it. This is where, well, the girl seemed very shocked and amazed and why Asa even helped her in the first place. But this is where Asa is walking away. Asa is going towards the forest because he doesn't have anywhere to live. Well, he does, but very much is not in Hodge Village. No, hell no. This is where, you know. He kind of falls down the stairs, and of course, also turns around and sees Yuno right now on the stairs. But, well, on the ground, was, um, basically below the stairs, basically on the ground, because he fell down. <coughs> Yuno says, Asta! Asta says, not this motherfucker again. Whatever. Asta starts walking away, and just, you know, he uses his wind style and says, Wind style. Tornado uh, wall. This is where a tornado wall appears. A huge tornado wall appears right in front of Asta. This is where everyone felt the magic. And this is where the two sisters are shocked to even see how much magic this fucking brat has most of the time. And this is where the girl is kind of shocked. That she almost see the person that actually helped her with the grimoire gets hit by a tornado. This is where, well, Asta turns around right now in pure anger and rage. Why? Well, he's quite annoyed with fucking Yuno's on oh, no, resistance. Yuno has been pissing him off for a while. This is where uh, Yuno gets up and says, Asta, I won't let you leave. This is where Asta says, Great, I have such a little brat of yourself. Standards annoy me. How about you? Fuck off, you know, for a second. I'm not trying to deal with your fucking obnoxious self. This is where Yuno says, I won't go. No, I won't leave. Until you tell me, where have you been? This is where Yuno seems tired, and of course, this is where Yuno is trying to stop himself from passing out. But this is where, well, Sister Lily and the others kind of say, You know. And of course, rushes towards Yuno's side. And Yuno says, uh, Sister Lily and. Nosh and the others. This is where Orsi says, What is happening? This is where, well, he looks towards Asta's direction and sees a giant tornado behind Asta. And this is where Asta kind of looks at the tornado and just says one thing. This is where, well, Asta sees the tornado, and of course, this is where Asta says, This thing is so annoying. Be gone, you filthy magic ability. This is where Asta pulls out his sword and just swings it once in front of him. And the tornado just gets cut once. Once. And it's uh, right now just obliterated. This is where, well, the wind is right now being pushed everywhere except Asta because Asta seems to be unaffected. You know why in his eyes he sends such a powerful magic attack, well, mostly magic defense, to try to block Asta away from before leaving. And Asta just cuts that shit in an instant. Asta kind of looks behind and sees Orsi's. And Orsi says, Asta? That's where Sister Lily says, Wait, huh? Nosh and the others kind of say, Wait, is that Asta? Nosh says, That can't be. He's been gone for eight years. Yuno says, He's been gone for eight years, yeah. But that means that he's here. And he got a grimoire. This is where uh, Father Orsi kind of rushes towards uh, Asta says, Hey! Asta, it's been a while. Where have you been? Right now, we're rushing towards him, being happy and cheerful. But only because, well, Asta got a grimoire. This is where, well, when he gets closer, Asta pulls out his sword and right now put it right towards Orsi's neck. And this blade is so sharp that barely it touches Orsi's. Like, it, it's like one, like one and a half inch away from, well, farther of Orsi's neck. But still so sharp. The, even the air is sharp around it. So of course it just cuts a little bit into Orsi's neck. Asta says, I don't know who you are, old man. I don't give a shit. 
if you were the one to fucking bring me into your freaking church. You should have probably just left me into the fucking snow. All I want to do is sleep and rest. I don't care about any of this bullshit. Either you come any closer and I cut your head off. Because I don't see you as any type of father figure. Hell to the fucking no. This is where, well, Asta then just told Orsis to fuck off because Asta really doesn't see Orsis at all as a father figure. The only thing who, who actually he sees as close to a father figure is the old man that he met eight years ago. Well, mostly the old man that trained him for eight years. And that's why he became this strong. This is where, well, Asta says, now leave me alone. This is where Asta puts his blade away from Orsi's neck. Of course, Orsi's neck is still bleeding a little bit, but this is where Asta puts his blade back into the sheath, and Asta's walking away. Well, Orsi says, yeah, Asta, I know I haven't been a great fa- This is where Asta says, shut up. Didn't I already tell you, leave me alone. This is where Asa's eyes become the crimson color red, and of course the Omega symbols appear. This is where, well, the air around Asa started becoming so much denser that even Asa is kind of right now an angry tone. This is where Fall Orsis can barely even breathe but thanks to the air becoming denser. This is where he's like, oh, Asa, please, let me. No, no, be gone. This is where, well, he blesses. It just repulsion uh, attack, basically just pushing Orsis away. And this is where Asa says, now leave me alone. Asa starts walking into the forest and disappearing. This is where, well, you know it's angry. The fact that, well, Asa did that to Father Orsis. Well, the fact that, well, Asa seems to care less about all of them. He doesn't know why. Well, that's just because he was just too praised and too much spoiled. By the everyone in the church, so of course he doesn't know how Asa really feels. Really, Asa never forget, and of course Asa has just been in anger. Of course, it worked. What? Uh, Asa is kind of like walking away, just kind of walking and walking. And of course, before he even leaves this kind of area, he kind of bumps into a man with red hair, and of course, this is where that man kind of talks to Asta. His name is Fanzo, and of course, where, well, was it Kruger or Fanzo? And of course, Asta says that his name is Asta. Well, he doesn't say his name is Asta. His, he says that his name is basically called the Jade Emperor. Of course, he basically just took, well, the actual original name of Jade Emperor. Well, he does have the powers of Jade Emperor, so of course. He just takes the name. This is where, well, he knows in this world the Jade Emperor doesn't actually exist. Gods don't actually exist in this world. They don't really come in that much. So, of course, this is where Asta just kind of like talks to him about him being the Jade Emperor. And, of course, this is where, well, Fenzel was like interested with the name. But, of course, they start just chilling and talking. Not really training. Asta doesn't train with Fenzel. Mostly well, so just talks to him. Of course, when Mariana comes to kind of take out, well, Fanzo, she actually meets Asta, and of course, Asta's charms manage to kind of stop her from doing anything crazy, like trying to leave, because when she tried to leave, Asta just basically grabbed her from the arm and stopped her. This is where Asta then asks about where, well, her base would be at in the Diamond Kingdom, or what she's being threatened with. This is where, well... She kind of opens up, and of course, is where Asta understand, and of course, just grab her and pushing her, pushing her towards what they call Fanzel. This is where well, Fanzel asks where Asta's going. Of course, Asta says, "Oh, just a walk, a walk of just a peaceful walk." Asta is walking. This is where he disappears in an instant, hyper uh, speed. Right now, appearing right in front of the Diamond Kingdom. This is where Asta walks through the Diamond Kingdom. Right now, without a care in the world, you see here, Asa has no magic. So, of course, he's not sent by anyone. And this is where, when Asa's walking through, multiple people kind of see him and kind of just ignore him. But this is where, well, when he gets to the point where what's called those assassins are at in the Diamond Kingdom, he wipes them all out with a mini, well, not mini, he mostly can't, I know, says, 
he said mini big bang a small i mean a tiny ball appears he drops it into the uh, assassination room and the whole almost in the entire kingdom gets blown up but this was a mini bomb it wasn't the biggest big big bang that asa could make so of course the thing just explodes and takes half of the kingdom wiping them off of the fucking map this is where well the assassin leader was still there while everyone was kind of shocking in the Diamond Kingdom, trying to run towards the situation when it's happening, Asta just walks away. Of course, before walking away, he decides to like walk through the Diamond Mages and cut them down by both basically using the sword. He just rips through them, easily cutting them down, wiping armies of armies of Diamond Mages. Even Diamond Generals, the new Diamond General, uh, well, mostly the new Shining Generals and old Shining Generals were wiped out. Except for Mars and some other people. But of course, they were, well, Asta just walked away out of the Diamond Kingdom. The Diamond King was angry, but before Asta leaving, he actually did wipe out the Diamond King by actually stabbing him into the head. This is where Asta jumps off of him and starts walking away. Yeah, Asta wiped the whole Diamond Kingdom. He could have easily wiped them all out from thin air. Asa is that powerful, and sometimes he doesn't really care about using his power that much. So of course, is where Asa does appear, and appear right in front of, well, Fancel and Mariana. Mariana tries to always get away from Fancel. It's been over, well, what's it called, two hours? But of course, Fancel says, come on, Mariana. It's not that bad. We will find Donna. You said you will help me, right? I swear, well, she said, yeah, but... What about, as far as I say, so I'm back. My peaceful walk took like two hours, but I'm back. This is where he's all covered up with blood. Nothing but just blood, guts, and other things around him. He was having, well, if he was a psychopath, he would have been smiling with this evil smile. But really, he seems to be uncaring his face. This is where Mariana kind of like rushes towards us. Oh, are you hurt? Anywhere? This is where, well... She's trying to check, but mostly the blood isn't even his. And the guts are really barely even his. This is where she's like, what happened? Asta says, oh, you know, I just went to a peaceful walk. This is where she says, tell me the truth. Fine. I cut down the diamond army into nothing but half. However many total that was. Of course, I'll just destroy the assassin po uh, portion. And I'll also kill the king of the diamond king. This is where I found out Mary and I says, what? Are you insane? What about the Shining Generals? Oh, they were cut down to half. I almost killed all the old... I think I killed all the old ones. And... The new ones that were cut down to only having... I don't know, like... Fucking... Four? Mariana and Fanta wind their eyes. And this is where Mariana starts shaking us and saying, Are you fucking insane? Jack, I could have wiped out everyone. I didn't kill any of the civilians. So we were worried about that. I just killed... The people that were born to me. But yeah, don't worry about it. I still start walking away and says, Well, now you two can leave live in peacefully. Well, I'll be uh, being bothered. So see ya. I still start walking away, but yeah. That's where, well, I still kind of goes and walks around. But this is where I'm going to leave it off. For part one of what if I still got in the power of the Jade Emperor. Yeah. But other than that, have a nice with the other day, but other than that, but and good night. Bye.